There's a lot of incomplete information out there regarding neck clearance and neck tension. Let me fill in some of those holes. Welcome to Connect the Dots. Let's start with some quick vocabulary words. Neck thickness is the width of the case neck. It is measured with a ball micrometer. The over bullet measurement, or OBM, is the measurement from the outside to the outside of the case neck with a seated bullet. The key to this is to make sure that the widest part of the bullet is in the case neck when you measure. This might not be the actual seating depth of the bullet. It is measured with a micrometer or it's theoretically calculated. Neck clearance is the gap between the case neck and the inside of the chamber walls. It can be discussed as total clearance or it can be discussed as per side. For example, 2000's clearance is the same as 1000's per side. The following numbers can be used as a guide for the majority of the rifles out there to ensure proper clearance. On the extreme end of the spectrum is negative clearance. This is when the loaded round will not chamber due to the over bullet measurement being greater than the chamber measurement. 0 .001 total clearance or under is generally considered an inadequate amount. This deficiency may lead to hard chamberings and pressure spikes. In the competitive world, there was a time when many thought a total clearance of under a thousandths was needed for optimal accuracy. Few competitive shooters still follow the tight neck philosophy. Today, the general consensus for proper clearance starts around one and a half thousandths and can go to point zero zero four. This is the range that allows for complete release of the bullet, yet does not encourage excessive work hardening or blowback. In my opinion, there is no valid reason to go much past 2000s clearance. On the opposite end of the spectrum is excessive clearance. Too much clearance is usually considered more than 4000s. The farther past that number you go, the more noticeable the work hardening, blowback, and loss of precision. A quick way to check to see if you have enough neck clearance is to take a fired case and a bullet and insert the bullet nose first into the case. If it goes into the case easily, that's a sign that you have enough clearance. One way to check to see if you have too much clearance is look at your carbon ring. If it goes way past where the bushing resizes, that's a sign that you got too much clearance. My name is Jason Stanley with Connect the Dots. If this is the type of information you'd like to learn about, I'm asking you to do four things. Subscribe, like, comment, and share. Those four things will help connect the dots grow and get better. Thanks for watching. A person can find their theoretical neck clearance by doing some basic math. First thing you want to do is measure your neck thickness using a ball micrometer. And I got 0 0.0091. Multiply that number by 2. Then what you want to do is you want to find the widest part of your bullet using a micrometer. In this case, it's the pressure ring found at the base. And I got 0 0.3088. Add those two numbers together. 0.30888101672323. That is my theoretical over bullet measurement. I know that my chamber has a 330 neck. So I'm going to take my neck and I'm going to subtract my over bullet measurement, which gives me, in this case, 3000s neck clearance. To find your actual neck clearance, 
you need to see the bullet. Remember that the widest part of the bullet needs to be in the case neck. That might not be your actual seating depth when you go to shoot it. You measure the case at that point, and I get point zero, no, sorry, point three two seven two. That is my over bullet measurement. I know that my chamber is a 330. So I'm going to subtract my over bullet measurement from my chamber and I get 0 0.0028. That is my actual net clearance. Now notice that it might not match up exactly with your theoretical net clearance. That, because, that could be because when you turned your necks, maybe they were slightly off. Maybe I measured slightly off. Regardless, reality always trumps theory. If reality always trumps theory, why would anybody want to do this theoretically? Answer, people who turn their necks. You can find your desired neck thickness by doing some reverse math. I know that I have a 330 chamber. I want to have 2000s neck clearance. So I subtract my neck clearance from my chamber and I get my theoretical over bullet measurement. I then take the bullet that I'm gonna use and I find the widest part using a micrometer. In this case, it was 0 .3088. So I subtract those two numbers, 0 .328 minus 0 .3088, and I get 0 .0192. I then divide that number by two to get my neck thickness. So if I want to have 2,000th neck clearance using this bullet, I need to turn my necks to 0 0.0096. Neck tension affects tuning. Neck tension is the amount of grip that the case neck puts on the bullet. A common way of finding your neck tension is to find your over bullet measurement using a micrometer. 0.3271. And then you subtract the number that's found on your bushing. In this case, 0 0.324. So there's that 0 0.0031 neck tension. I would round that to 3 thousandths neck tension. Subtracting the bushing size from the over bullet measurement is going to work for the huge majority of rifles that are out there. However, if you're a competitor, you might want to go a step farther. This was taught to me by a Hall of Fame bench rest shooter. I do not have a bullet seating gauge. I don't have anything that's going to measure the force that it takes to seat the bullet. So what I do is I take a case and I'm going to resize it. In this instance, I have a 324 bushing. And I measure the resized portion of that neck. And I got 0 0.3238. 0 0.3238. Then I'm going to see the bullet in that case that I just resized. and I measure where the pressuring is. I measure the over bullet measurement, 0.3269. And I subtract those two numbers, and this is gonna give me basically 3 thousandths neck tension. The reason I do that is because bushings do not always resize to what they say they will. In that last example, if I would have just taken the over bullet measurement and subtracted my bushing size, I would have came out exactly where I need to be. That is not always the case. For example, here's a 324 bushing. I have it colored red. Take a case, I'm going to resize it. And I got 
three, two, four, four, three, two, four, five, three, two, four, four. Now, I'm going to switch that bushing out for the 325 bushing. And this one's colored black. So as you can see, these bushings do not resize to what they say they will. What I did is I took all my bushings and they have a different color. And then I just simply made a cheat sheet with anneal brass so they know what each color resizes to. Depending on your level of accuracy or precision that desired, you might want to consider doing that. Over time, neck clearance might have an impact on your neck tension. The farther those case walls have to move during resizing and firing, the faster the negative effects of work hardening will take place. So I think a shooter has three main options. Number one, properly anneal your brass. Number two, change your bushing size to keep the neck tension the same. And number three, start over with fresh brass. A common fault on the internet, something to be careful of, is when people talk about neck tension, they only give their bushing size. To truly know how much neck tension they're using, they have to give their bushing size or the resized portion of the neck and their over bullet measurement. Personally, to avoid all this confusion, I wish people would say I'm using 3000s neck tension or I'm using 4000s neck tension. The reloader can then calculate using their own bullets and their own brass what size bushing they need. If you are truly searching for the utmost in accuracy and precision, you have to understand neck clearance and neck tension. Until next time, enjoy the experience.